Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, Brother Brand Ambassador, and we are at your side virtually today, Facebook Live and YouTube Live. So you can join us on the sewing or crafting side, and we can see your comments on both. So I hope you're having a fabulous day. It's Thursday. It's Southwest Michigan is a little bit cloudy and nasty today. So I wore some fabulous embroidery to give a little color. So welcome. If you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. It's always fun to see all over the world, all of you joining each week. So today we have a great brother educator, Heather Banks, and she's going to be working on the scan and cut. So we talked about that a little bit the last few weeks. I don't think you could ever get enough of that. So we keep... A little bit more, a little bit more, but wait till you see what she has planned today. It's going to be very exciting. So I see you all rolling in. Hey, Arnell, I did not find any purple hats yet, but I'm looking. <laughs> so say hi and let's bring Heather up. Hi, Heather. Hi, Angela. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. And what's new in your world today? Well, um, not too much, I'm happy to say. It seems like it's nice when things are just rolling around as usual. We have our bees and our we're trying to make honey out in the yard. So our bee population has just exploded and we're getting some baby chicks. So we're doing lots of outdoor farming type stuff, which is really fun around here. Oh, that's very fun. You have chickens? Well, we're getting baby chicks. We just, my husband just finished the chicken coop, which looks fabulous. It's like one of those little um, mini houses that people make for themselves, like a person could live in it, but it's for the chicken. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. In fact, I told my husband, this is kind of funny, but we're not in an area where I can actually have chickens, but I would love to have chickens. And I told him, I eat eggs every day. I think we should just get a couple chickens. He's like, yeah. are you feeling okay? I go, no. So now I'm going to tell him. I talked to Heather. <laughs> She's getting little chicks. They would make great pets. And eventually... <laughs> Exactly. Eggs, which we could all use more of. So I'm really excited. That's going to happen just tomorrow. Oh my gosh. That's very exciting. I can't, you got to share photos with me. Okay. <laughs> so you had something really fun today because you and I were talking about, even the last time you were on, we were talking about different things with the scan and cut and so many people um, ask questions and there's more questions and they're like, well, does this work on my scan and cut? Well, most of them, yes. And you're going to talk about something that we've not covered yet today. So why don't you share? Okay, so I was thinking about all the things we love to talk to you all about with the Scan and Cut, and I thought, you know, one of the things that I think is wonderful about the Scan and Cut is if you have patterns that you want to use, sewing patterns, pieces of fabric that you want to fussy cut, and there's been a lot of different bags and purses that I've seen lately where people want to fussy cut the particular design for their bags, or um, even woodworking. So I have a couple different things to show you that I think are sort of out of the box and different uh, ways to use a, our scanning cuts. And I'm really excited. We're going to be talking a lot about templates, fussy cutting, cutting out of plastic. I mean, you can cut out of placemats to make your templates. And of course, I want to show you the wood that we just cut. Now, the wood project I'm showing you wasn't cut on the scan and cut because it's large pallet wood, but we did all the templates on the scan and cut and I'm, I'm pretty excited. So that's what I want to show you. This is going to be very exciting. So I see all of you in here. So I see that we are definitely live on all the YouTube channels and the Facebook for Brother Sews and Brother Crafting. So please feel free to leave your comments and questions as we go. I'm not going to interrupt Heather as we go, but we'll take little breaks and take your questions. So Absolutely. Please ask questions and let me know if I've made everything clear. But let me switch my camera view so that you can see the projects I'm going to be talking about today. So let me do okay. that really quick. Sounds good. While she's doing that, I see some of you popping in here. <laughs> you love your chickens. I think that that's the best idea ever. I'm still working on win on it, but it hasn't worked. So I did get a lot of your comments yesterday that I was cracking up when we were talking about the squirrels eating out of the plastic. They're eating the plastic eggs out of our yard this week. Well, yesterday, while I was sending out everybody's newsletter, I heard this little rumbling at my door. I had my screen door open and one of my little squirrel friends got in between the door and the screen and he was tapping on the screen so I would feed him more nuts. So I think I do definitely need to get a life, but <laughs> chicks would be way more fun. All right, Heather, I got you in here. I can see your screen just great. Super. Okay, Angela, I kind of placed everything here just to give you an idea of what we are going to be talking about. And so here you can see that I have an adorable zipper bag. This is actually called... <clears throat> 
we have the Harlequin, Harlequin pouch. And this is by Crafted by Leanne. And she has given us permission to talk about this and show you how to make this on the Scan and Cut. This is actually a free pattern and uh, I just love it. And you can see how you can fussy cut. And I've noticed a lot on um, online how people have talked about wanting to fussy cut with this. So I'd love to talk to you a little bit about that. Additionally, this is a different pattern, Candy Hearts. It's since by Sincerely Jen Patterns. And she's also given us permission to talk about this. Now, sometimes when we cut uh, cork and vinyl on the scan and cut, it's difficult to get these really perfect edges. I mean, when you're cutting something like this with scissors, you know, it's just hard. So I thought, why not show you how you can also use your patterns? So let me give you an idea what I mean by that. We have patterns here by both of those people that I just talked about. And I wanna show you how you can take your paper patterns and put those into your scan and cut and then cut either directly on the scan and cut, the fabric, or just create a template. But the thing I was going to start with today is the, uh, the this wood project that you see underneath me. So let me slide it up so you can see. Now I give my husband full credit for this. I believe he's watching even. And you can see uh, that this is, let me kind of show you the side. It's pretty thick and just a plywood backing. So it's fairly heavy duty and it's all glued on. And uh, I'm actually, this is my purse hanger he created for me. But this, oh, go ahead. <laughs> That's absolutely gorgeous. I'm just sitting here in awe. That's gorgeous. What a great idea for a purse holder. Oh, right. I just needed something. And he got really creative because quite frankly, Angela, he sneak, he watches our live shows and gets ideas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good job. <laughs> yes. And of course, women do woodworking too. So this is not to exclude all the women out there who do woodworking. And I enjoy some as well. It just so happens that this was made by my husband. This particular design is in the scanning cut. There are 140 quilt blocks in the scanning cut. And he just chose a random one that he liked. This is actually palette wood. So it's very rough, you know, and coarse looking. This is just stained different colors, the palette wood. And I wanted to give you an idea of how you can take just a design in your scanning cut. In this case, like I said, the, uh, the quilt blocks that we have built in. So let me show you how this worked. All right. So first thing we did was he found a design that he liked. This is drawn on the scanning cut. Doesn't matter what size you draw it. He just needed a reference point. So what we have here is I've just identified how many he needed of everything. He needed one D, he needed four C's, etc. There are actually 29 different pieces in this particular block. There's much simpler ones, much more complicated ones. So this was our first step. We just drew the block so we had a reference for how to assemble it later. So let me move that out of the way. The next thing we did was we created realistic actual size templates. I only needed four because I only needed one of each piece. I did not need to cut templates for every single one. So I can show you how to do that. But basically we have four templates and that was used to construct the entire block. So here are the C templates. Here you can see the B. Uh, we have A here and then the large D. So once he knew how many he needed to cut, and these are the actual ones he used, he just used these paper templates. Let me put this back and show you what we did. So we took a piece and I'm using the term we very loosely here. I'm sure he's watching thinking, hmm, we, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have underneath here is a piece of plywood using the paper, like I said, that we drew, once we knew where all of the pieces needed to go, just basically like a jigsaw puzzle, he was able to put them all back in the way they fit. Oh my goodness, I don't even know anymore. Look at that, that's terrible. Okay, Heather, was, let's try. I think this is where the we comes in, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, I think you're right. So, um, here we go. He was telling me earlier when we were talking about this how the pieces all had to be, um, Oh my gosh, why can't I get that back in? This is terrible. I'm a terrible puzzle drawer. Flip it over. Puzzler. Can you flip it over? Yeah, it has to be. There we, wait. Why can't I get that back in? Seriously. The we, oh, oh, there we go. Thank you. Like you said flip way. it over. There we go. <laughs> That's why we need this. <laughs> 
because when it is a plain piece of wood and you're just starting out with nothing on it, then you're gonna wanna know where to put all of your pieces once they're cut. So this is obviously our biggest one. And then all of these, I'm not doing that again. I'm not going there. I'm just sliding <laughs> those back on there. Uh, those, uh, that's how it all gets assembled. Now I talked to him about it and what he did, he just glued all of these on. So he had this plywood base, each piece was glued on. And then that ultimately gave us our final project, which like I said, is the one that I have hanging up for my purse which looks like this. And I have personally asked him since he enjoys woodworking, if he could make one for every member of the family for Christmas. I mean, we have 140 quilt blocks. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Absolutely, so fun. So my question is, should we show everyone how to draw a block in case they'd like to see how that works? I think we definitely should because people are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I wanna see how to do this. So yes, I think you should. Okay, well, I don't know. Let's ask them. Do you guys want to see the whole process here or do you want her to skip? Yeah, either way. I've kind of given you the idea. Uh, I think, hold on, always, there's always like a three second delay, but I have a feeling I know what it's going to be because I want to see it. <laughs> now, I see a question there. Is it Arnell who said, are they glued in? And again, there was a bit of a delay. So absolutely, they are glued straight on. There was nothing. He did not use any kind of nails or anything special. Simply uh, wood glue on the back and put them in like that puzzle piece that I could not reassemble there, as you saw. And uh, each piece was just glued straight on, allowed to dry. And you can see this is just a mirror image. So he... Um, cut this one and then this would have been reversed there. Uh, but that that really is it. It was surprisingly simple and I give him full credit. I never thought of doing something like this. And I love, I love that this is another option for my skin and cut. Oh, I see whole process. Go ahead and show. Should we do it? Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a unanimous hands down show. It. They're okay. ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to move this out of the way. So first thing we did is, like I said, we needed a reference point and we needed to pick a quilt block. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm just taking a piece of cardstock. You could do this out of other things. This is, by the way, my low tack mat because I'm putting paper on here and I want to draw. So let me take that off and take my paper, Get my try to get my shadow out of here, and just stick that down. And that's going to be all. Now I'm going to put a piece of tape on my paper because I don't want it to shift. And we typically like to use washi tape. And there's so many kinds of washi tape out there. Uh, so let me just put a piece because I just don't want my paper to shift around while the pen's going. And uh, that should keep it in place. All right. I'm going to go. Oops. Before I go over there. Look, here's what I'm going to use. Now, this is the included pen holder that comes with your scanning cut. This is not an extra piece. And here's one of the pins that came. So in this case, I didn't have to do anything special. I didn't have to go purchase anything. Now you push the button on the back, click that open, and then I'm going to drop my pen straight in and close. So now you can see that the pen is extended and actually brother even gives you this little spot on top to hold your pen. So here we go. We have our pen holder. I'm going to insert that into the machine. Let me take both of these over to my scan and cut and uh, I'm going to change my camera position really quick so that we could go over to scan and cut. Now first <laughs> it's just going to show you the screen. I'll back up so that you can see the whole oh, thing. Heather, I'm just cracking up while you're doing that. Deborah says she's trying to accidentally move her screen a little bit so her husband can see. <laughs> can <tell> All right. <laughs> okay, so messy background. I know. Everybody can peek into my messy sewing room. All right. That is great. I love that she's showing him that. And I do not mean to exclude our women were woodworkers either, but in this case, I know husbands like to as well. Okay. So here is the pen. I'm just going to place it in just like I do for cutting any of with my blades and push, push that down. Then I'm going to take my mat and I'm going to push the mat feed button. There we go, it's going in. 
Okay, we're loaded and it's basically ready to go. So I'm gonna just go ahead and scroll up so that you can go back to seeing just my screen. Now keep in mind, I'm using a DX scan and cut and those are the newest versions. If you have a Disney or you have this blue model, then you do have a DX and it would say it right at the top. If you see the top of my screen, if that isn't cut off, it does say DX right here. All right, let's go ahead and choose our pattern and I'll just, Go ahead and scroll the second screen. Here are our quilt patterns, click on there. I know which one he used just to keep it consistent. Let's use it again. So if I scroll oh down. Oh my gosh, oh. Heather, by the way, yes. I just have to stop you for a second because a few people were saying, where are you finding all these quilt designs? Where Did you see how many, did you guys see how many she just scrolled through? Uh, and I think a lot of people don't even realize they're in there. They're in the scan well, cut. Well, let me back up then. That's a great point. So you, it sort of looks like, oh, I just have seven, seven blocks, but not at all. These all have subcategories. And like I said, there's 140 quilt blocks built into the machine. So when you scroll through the pages, there's so many. So if you wanted this to be very simple, Absolutely, you can do that. You do not have to get complicated. If triangles or cutting um, angles aren't your thing, or if you wanna get really complicated, you absolutely can. I mean, that's what I said. He needs to get busy because I need Christmas presents. These are <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Okay, let me go back to where we were. So you can, oh, and I should mention hexagons. So if you want, wow. to, I mean, I love this category. I actually think I'm gonna want him to make me one of these next. And, and those have subcategories as well, right? What was that? And there's um, there's quite a few of those hexagon in there, aren't there? Yes, definitely. Let me kind of go through the page there so you could see how many there are. There are quite a few and so many different patterns. I give credit to Brother for really coming. I mean, they didn't um, shirk their duties here on coming up with quilt patterns. I, I'm i just amazed at the variety that we have. Okay, let me come back out of here and go back to where I know he was. Actually, this one's one of my favorites too. Okay, anyways, don't get distracted, Heather. There's too many to look at. <laughs> Well. <laughs> All right, so here's the one he chose. This was just a random one that he liked. Now, first thing we need to do is draw it. And you can see that the default is too big for my mat. This is a 12 by 12 mat and we just need to draw it. It doesn't matter how big it is. This is purely for reference when we assemble our puzzle. So I'm gonna make something that I know is smaller than the mat. Keeping in mind, it's gonna add seam allowances briefly. So I'm just going to, let me just pick a 10 inch, just random. Okay. Perfect. Say, okay. All right. If you haven't seen this before, if you choose the shape, notice how that shape is in the four corners. So we need four of those. This one now shows you that you need one for the center. This one now shows you that you need eight triangles on the side. So the scan and cut is very specific about how many you need and where they are placed. However, we're just drawing this, so I'm gonna choose the last category, which chooses every single block at the same time and say, okay. All right, here it is. Now, if it looks like, why does it have a bunch more lines in there? That's because the scan and cut actually adds seam allowances, which is a really fantastic feature for sewing. We're not gonna need that for woodworking, but let me go ahead and push set. And now that you can see, this is taking up the entire mat. So I'm going to say, and now I know my paper covers the entire mat, so I'm not gonna go ahead and scan it. I'm just gonna say, okay. And I'm going to select draw. We don't wanna cut this, I just wanna draw it. Perfect, and I'm gonna push start. Let's let it draw and I'll back up so that you can see it doing that. And it'll just take it a second. So you can already see how perfect the edges are. It's one of the things I love about using this feature is it, you know, my hand's shaky, even with the ruler, I'm not gonna get it perfect. Plus the scale, it's automatically scaling all the triangles, all the squares, everything to the perfect size. And this is what I'm going to use as we said before, when I just drew it out. So first step, draw the quilt pattern that you like and that you wanna use. And just one second, it'll be done. And I'll so show Heather, you. 
while you yes. were doing that, when you clicked on draw, just for those that were kind of like, wait, what happened to those seam allowances? When you clicked on draw, they disappeared. Did you have to click anything before that or just when you clicked on draw, they disappeared? That is such a good question. And honestly, um, it was something that confused me at first as well. So I totally get the question. When you click draw, all the seam allowances go away because the scan and cut understands that it's simply for, let me go back here to seeing you. The scan and cut understands that it's simply for drawing and that you don't need the seam allowances. So it, it understands that it's just the edges of the block when it adds in the seam allowances for cutting. So we will wanna remove them for cutting out our templates. Then we have an option to turn the seam allowances on and off. But for drawing, just push draw and all the seam allowances will go away. So it's just about oh, done. Oh, magic. <laughs> So pretty cool. It's smart. It knows what it's doing. Okay. I'm going to remove it from the machine. And now you can see that it's drawn. This is now, oh, wow. now it's not to scale unless you want your quilt to be exactly this size. But um, if we, or excuse me, if you want your woodworking to be this size. So yes, love it. It's beautiful. Second step, we need to cut out the templates that are the correct size for what you want to make. Now, in this case, I do not have to do this at le uh, less than 12 inches. Let me show you how that works. I'm gonna take off my paper very quickly and put on the blue one just for reference so you can see. It doesn't obviously could be any color. Um, now, my my particular quilt block that he made is about 13 inches. So it is absolutely larger than our 12 inch mat. You can go even bigger than that. And let me show you how. So I put my paper on and I'm going to load it into my machine. And I'm going to take out my pen. And I always try to remember to put the lid on. I don't know about you, Angela, but I tend to forget and they like to dry out. <laughs> now, here we go with our standard, trying to make sure if that's in focus. This is just our standard blade with the black top. We're gonna use that for cutting paper. So I'm going to push that in and I'm gonna go back to the home screen. So let me zoom you in back. A Little bit of a bumpy ride, but we'll get you there. <laughs> we're like, whoa, we're good. We can okay. see it really good though. I, I was having so much fun reading the comments. People were like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that this, this that they could do this. Right, I know. I, it's just so such a new creative twist. Okay, let's just go back. And we've decided, for instance, that we're, we're obviously, we've, we've drawn it. So now we need to get our templates. So I'm gonna go back to the quilt block. Now, let's say I want it to be a 16 inch block. Mine was 13, but let's say I want it to be that. Uh, so I'll say, okay. Now, this is where you're going to pick your individual pieces. I just need one of each. So I'm going to need the one square from each of the corners. It automatically gives me four. Nope, I just want to cut one. That's all we're doing is making a template. So I'll say set. Notice it has the seam allowances. Don't panic. We'll get rid of those. Going to go add, and I'll get the center square. It's only going to cut one anyway, so no problem. Set that. Add, okay, I need eight of these, but I'm only cutting one. So I'm going to change the number down to one, say set. And then I think I only need, this is the last piece I need. Even though there's four of them on here, they're the exact same piece. So I'll just say one, set, oh, not enough space on the mat. Okay, let's just go with what we have for now. So what it's saying is that that piece would have been pretty large for the 16 inch block. Now what I could do is go to the 24 inch mat and do the 24 inch one, but just for time's sake, we're just going to do with the three. Okay. So now that I have all three on there, here's the seam allowance question. If I cut these right now, they are going to cut with the seam allowance and we can't use seam allowances with wood. So I'll say edit, object edit, and this little button is seam allowances. I'm going to turn it off, say okay. And now, oops, I did mean, sorry, that only did it for one. Let me choose everything. All of them are chosen. Object edit, well, 
I'm having, oh, it's because, all right, we got to do this one time. It's because I took the seam allowance off that one that it won't let me do all of them. Seam allowance off, okay. Seam allowance, and that repetition is good. Off, okay. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> so from my angle, which I'm trying not to be in your way, I believe, Angela, did, did I take all the seam allowances off? Uh, they oh. sure look like it from here. Okay, perfect. Let's say okay. Let's say okay again. I don't need to scan because my paper takes up the entire space. Say okay, cut. Remember we did draw before, I'm gonna say cut and start. And now this is going to cut the exact size we need in order to make our templates for our wood. So this will just take one second. You notice by putting that little bit of tape on the side, not my paper won't slip, but because it's the low tack mat, it also won't, the paper won't rip when I tear it away. And that is something to keep in mind when you are uh, doing anything with paper is if your mat is too sticky, then when you remove your paper, it will tear. It All done. A mess. It becomes a mess. That, see how fast that was? There's some people in here saying, is it cutting now? Didn't you have to change anything? Yeah, she changed the blade. Don't forget. Oh, yes. So remember, black topped blade is um, in here. I'm going to put that just back here. Okay, let me take the mat out and show you if I just take the tape off. Oh, actually, it's just popping up. You can see how easy. So here is this one. Here is the triangle. And here's the small corner squares. So this was making a 16 inch block. So absolutely this does not correspond with the one we drew because this is our reference piece. And these are the actual templates that we now need to go to the barn, in our case, and cut out of wood. So I need to cut as many as I need for each piece, but all I had to do was just cut one. Now, if you don't wanna do this out of paper, you could absolutely do this out of a thicker material. For instance, you could use um, you could use template plastic. Here's some clear template plastic that cuts wonderfully. <laughs> this is a placemat from a dollar store. And oh, that's cute. <laughs> this works wonderfully. So this would be obviously much stronger and more durable than say paper, but that's all we used in this case was just paper. And then to just to switch you back, then all you're going to do is uh, cut these, let's see, where am I? You're just going to cut these out of your wood, whatever wood you choose to use and glue it down like we showed you before. So does it make so, sense? One quick thing, just so that um, everyone's clear. She did not cut the wood with the scan and cut. She oh. cut all of the pattern. And I saw a couple of people saying, how thick is that wood? She did not cut the wood with it. <laughs> yes, oh my gosh, let me, cause it's just sitting right here. Oh, here, no, no, absolutely, I did not. <laughs> cut this wood with the scan and cut. This case we used, um, we, there's that generic we again. <laughs> he cut this from pallet wood. So um, all we wanted to do was get the template so that he could put the templates over the wood. And then he, I'm assuming he traced, I wasn't there when he was doing it. And then was able to cut them out with a saw, an actual honest to goodness wood saw was used to cut these out. Yeah. Definitely. And so you, uh, some people are asking, can you, I, I couldn't tell if that was, can you draw on wood? Uh, it's like what, three millimeters, I think is the thickness of anything you can put on there, but you definitely cannot cut wood. So just make no. sure you. And you can cut balsa wood, like a very thin balsa wood. So you could use that for your template as well. And it's, but you know, you, you all know how thick a placemat is. Yeah. And uh, that's, I mean, something around there. If you think of uh, puffy foam, you could cut this out of puffy foam that you get at the craft store. That would work. Mm -hmm. It's three millimeters, yeah. but just not, not Ooh. giant wood. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. So um, a few people rolled in. They just want you to show that one, the final product. Just one yes. more time. Show my Absolutely. Business. Thank you. Let me switch cameras so you can see. Uh, let's see. You're welcome, Maureen. I agree. This is fantastic. I leave here with so many ideas. Oh my gosh. My scan and cut used to sit and I'd use it like every once in a while. Now I leave it plugged in and on all the time. 
That is so much. Sorry, my takes my camera just a second. I feel the same, Angela, that I keep it plugged in all the time as well because it just has so many fun uses. So I'm sorry this doesn't quite fit, but you can see this was the base and these were just some decorative poles that he put on there. And then this was the finished piece. So this was our uh, plywood crack, or it's not finished. Trust me, as soon as we're done, this is going back out to the barn to get finished. <laughs> but this was just our plywood piece that we put all our pieces on. And then the finished piece looks like this after it's all glued and stained. And you can just do this with any quilt block. You have a hundred, there are 140, some of those are appliques. So less of the, just these, but you know, Oh, well, oh, close to 100 quilt blocks that you could choose from using this technique. Very cool. Everybody cool. thinks Good. very cool. Very cool. All right. Let's move on. If nobody has any questions, I got more fun stuff to show you. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, I'm checking to make sure there weren't any questions on here. Uh, Patricia had a quick question. Uh, can you make a stencil to paint a block on a big piece of wood? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, I don't have that in front of me because it would be fun to kind of show you, but let's say that this was my stencil that I wanted to paint with. If I put this into the scan and cut and I scan and I want to say cut my stencil out on plastic, there is an option for cutting the inside and outside of this line. And when we scan next, I will show you where that button is and it would leave me with a hole in between this and it would let me um, go ahead and do painting or stenciling or quilting or anything like that. So great question. Okay, let me get these out of the way. When you have that, up, for the letters, you just you just wrote your letters in, didn't you? That is correct. I was trying to think of a way to make it clear for him. Um, and actually, he did his own, and he just colored them in. He didn't even use my letters. So Okay, because someone said, how did you get the letters in there? Well, you can draw letters from the scanning cut, but I think I would just uh, it'd be just as fast to just write them. Correct. Correct. You just want to, and I was just looking for, I don't see it. You just want to write them. So absolutely. Okay. Next thing. Like I said, we had a couple patterns here. Let me talk about this one first. So this particular pattern is called, like I said, the Harlequin pouch. My purpose of showing it is, well, first of all, it's an awesome pattern. I really do love it. And it's extremely popular. It's free and you can get it um, by crafted by Leanne's uh, Facebook page. But what I wanna show you is this is vinyl and fabric. And so many people have asked questions about this because you're taking a pattern that you get in any sewing pattern and you're turning it into this. And especially when you want to fussy cut. So for instance, here is a stencil that I made on the scanning cut. Well, obviously they didn't provide a stencil. I had to think of a way to make it myself and notice it is the placemat. So what you can see here is I scanned this in and I was able to create a stencil. Now let's say you don't want a fussy cut um, in a different way, I should say. Here's another example. This is just a piece of template plastic that I cut from the same pattern. This was the fold, so I duplicated it to create two. And now I can move this piece of plastic around anywhere onto my fabric and get the exact placement that I want. So with, with sewing patterns, so often we kind of struggle with how am I going to create a way to cut the fabric in exactly the place I want, especially anything that has a decorative design on it, like for instance, this. And my suggestion is create a template if you don't wanna cut directly on the scanning cut. So I can move this around, I could draw a line with a temporary pen and I could use my rotary blade. That's very simple because the shape is easy. If I don't want to do that, I'll just cut it out on my scanning cut. And so let me show you how this works. Move these out of the way and get my, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, I'm going to pull out my scan mat. The scanning mat looks like this and it says scanning mat down at the bottom. This is a 12 by 12. One of the really nice things about this is it has a clear plastic cover. So obviously you're not doing any cutting when you use the scanning mat. I'm going to put this in. Now I have two options with this. I can either use the pattern exactly how it comes or I can trace it before I use it. 
One of the benefits of tracing is it gets rid of all of the stuff that's inside. But the honest truth is it doesn't matter because I can easily get rid of all that. So if you would like to trace, go right ahead. If you don't, let's just use it straight like it is. So I'm gonna put this in here and it's ready to scan on the scanning cut. So let me take you over there and I'll load this into the machine. This should just take a sec to change my camera. While, she, while Heather's setting that up, I see some of you asking, can I get the pattern? So what I'll do, because it's not a brother product, I will, uh, when we're finished with the show, I will get all the links to these other uh, patterns for you from the other designers. And if you give me like until four o'clock, which is like just three hours after the show, I will put it on her uh, video if you go to AngelaWolf.com. So I'll put the link down below. Just wait a couple hours after the show. I'll get all the links for you and then you'll be able to click and get those patterns because I believe she said they're free. Well, this one is free. The other one, I think it's $1.99. So they're extremely affordable. Oh, and very affordable. And there's so many good ideas. And like I said, both designers are well aware that we're talking about these and they were excited about it. So we'll definitely give you the information. Okay, load it into the machine. Now let me go ahead and get you close so you can see the details of what I plan to do to get this into a template or to cut the, the fabric directly. Oh, sorry. How's that for closeness? <laughs> That's really good. We're good. We see you great. Super. All right. Right here, we have our scan option. I'm going to click scan. Now I have a couple options. Direct cut will not work here because I will cut out my plastic top if I do a direct cut. I'm going to scan to cut data and push start. Now I do recommend, and I'm going to throw this in here. You oh, might be able to see it's kind of small. This is currently in color mode. You will get the best results, even though this is black and white in color mode. So push the wrench and you're defaulted by the just out of the box to black and white. Choose the color and say, okay, and push start. So now it's telling me that my scanner is in position two. That's farther away. So I'm going to go to the side of the machine, push it down to one so that I get a very close scan on the paper and push start. This is just gonna take a couple seconds to scan. And what it's doing is it's getting all of the information on the paper. We know we don't want this stuff on the inside. We just want the outer lines. So while that's gonna be done now here, and you'll be able to see the screen. Okay. Let me drag in my arrows. I'm basically cropping close to what I want. So there we go. I believe I caught it all. I'm going to say, okay, give it a sec to process. Now, someone asked a minute ago, what if I wanted to do a stencil? I can either choose the stencil option where it cuts on the inside and the outside of the lines, or I can cut just the outside. In this case, I only want the line. I don't want inside outside. But if I were cutting a stencil, I would use this one. But let's go ahead and just choose the lines on the outside. And then I'm going to say, okay. Give it a sec to process. It really is this simple. Because I am saving it, I'm just gonna put it directly into my machine. And then we're gonna pull it up and we're gonna use it. I wanted you to see that it's actually so very simple. And I don't, it's telling me I have 109 <laughs> designs saved and that's the number it will be. I'm going to say, okay, go home and we're done with the scan. Now I'll go to retrieve data. It's saved in the machine. And I need to go all the way to the end. And there it is only, did I not pick? Huh, I must've chosen the wrong thing when I was doing the scan. Well, that's okay, let me show you. So it did pick up what was on the inside. Just for uh, to show you how something like that could be fixed, I'm going to go ahead and say edit. And then you can arrow through the pieces that you don't want. So I can go through and delete these. I, I obviously chose something wrong while I was standing here and didn't see it. But I could individually go through and, and delete these. That's actually not a problem. But for the sake of time, and let me just go back to the beginning because I actually have this saved. And let me go to retrieve data, back to the machine. I have to give, give me a sec to think about what I pushed that was different because typically what you would get is something that looks like this. And these are slightly 
different um, orientation. But you can see that I have I have two, uh, one for the bottom and one for the top. So let me go back to here because I do want you to be able to see this. Scan to cut data, start, give it a second. Let's go back to scanning it. And you know, it's it, it's only because it's live, by the way, but it's great to see that when you roll through things, it doesn't, you know, if you gotta go back and change something, it's very easy to do, so. Oh gosh, yes, absolutely. We don't mind seeing this at all. All right, I'm gonna come back to framing my pattern, say, okay, give it a second to recognize. And yes, you can make all kinds of changes to this, which is so nice once it's saved. So I always recommend saving. Give it one second to just recognize the outline. And I'm going to give it a sec. There we go. Okay, I'm going to push the outside. Okay, I do not see anything highlighted anymore in the middle. I only see the outline. So I'm going to say okay and save it to the machine. So that may be just something that I pushed something odd there. Um, of course, it's live TV, so that's why it's going to happen. <laughs> okay, it's number 110. So let's go back to the beginning, and I'm going to retrieve data from the machine, go to the end, and there it is. So there was a little bit of a some kind of uh, something that happened there, but this is actually that simple. You should have only had to push the outline, and you will get nothing on the inside. I'll say okay, and now this is ready to cut. So I have the exact replication of my design and I'm ready to cut. So I'm gonna back up and show you how that works. So we'll back up my camera and pull this out. Okay, just gonna and take I, my cat mat uh, out. Monique, the lever that she's talking about, number two, it's on the newer machines where there's, it's on the side of the machine. So it will tell you that. So you won't even, if, it's on, if you have an older model, you won't have that. If you have a newer one, you'll have it and you'll see it on the side of your machine. Absolutely. Thank you for clarifying that, Angela. I didn't show it because it's all the way over on the side, so it would have been hard to move the camera, but it's just an up and down arrow. And I'm changing over so that you can see the mat that I'm using. Okay, I'm going to be using my fabric mat. Oh, we love the fabric mat because somebody was just asking on there, what could I use to make... Uh, cutting fabric easy. The fabric mat and the fabric blade. Uh Absolutely. 100% agree. This is our fabric mat. And I'm sure many of you who've been here before have seen it. It says fabric mat right here. It has this gold color. It's extra, extra sticky. It works so wonderfully with fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my piece of fabric down and already it is so sticky and sticking to this. And you just wanna give your fabric a really nice uh, press onto this mat, although it's not going anywhere. It's on here really well. So I, let's see, I am just putting that fabric down and making sure that it's on there well, and now it's ready to go to the machine. When I was making these bags, I was just looking for chunks of fabric that were scraps. And this is a really good process for that. Let me show you. I'm gonna go back to the scan and cut so that you can see exactly how we do this. All right, I'm going to load this mat into the machine. Before I do, I'm going to do what Angela said and I'm going to use the fabric blade. The fabric blade has a gold top that matches the base of your fabric mat. So I'll put that in. And then I'm going to load my mat. Perfect. Now this is set up to cut the top and bottom and all I want to do is cut the top. So let's go ahead and I will, I've actually duplicated the top and bottom already, but let's just say I don't want to cut that piece. I'm only cutting the top. I'll go to edit. This piece is highlighted and this is the bottom. I'll push trash, okay. And now I have a top piece to cut. If I want to cut two, which I need, I need two of these and one needs to be the mirror image. So duplicate two. I have two, but one, they can't both go the same direction. So this one, I will choose mirror image, and now I'm ready to scan. So I'm going to say okay, push the scan button, 
and start. So one of the best features about the Scan and Cut is our scanning ability. So this is scanning in the fabric. And to be honest, you don't even have to make a template because you can choose the, the background of your fabric directly on the screen. So, so if you don't want- Heather, well, I'm gonna interrupt you just for one quick sec before you cut, because a, a slew of these questions came in and I, I saw them all, so I want you guys to know, uh, cause it's kind of important. Uh, there's a few different things. Everybody's asking about the fabric. Is there a backing on it? Did you do anything to the fabric? And uh, let's just take a quick second, explain the difference between the fabric mat and if you were just cutting on a regular mat and do you have anything on that fabric? Excellent question, Angela. Okay, so um, we, when we use the fabric mat, it is for fabric only, excuse me, cotton type fabric only. It's cotton, flannels, things like that. This is for cutting thin fabric and the actual name of the blade is the thin cut fabric blade. So I don't want to do, it'd be less good results if you did something thick. So I'm going with the cotton here. Now, should you back it or not? Typically we say this is for a, fab, a cotton fabric without a backing. So when I say backing, I mean a fusible. So let me just reach over here because I have one sitting here. So this, oops. I got really in the way. This <laughs> would just be, I think that's my hand, the fabric. Oh, I'm gonna back up. That's why you can't see it. Okay, so this would be the fabric that we're talking about where it's just a cotton fabric and no backing. So I have no fusible on the back. However, sometimes I like to make bags and purses with a fusible, something you know that's woven. Uh, there's many different products out there that you can just fuse onto the back and it'll give a bag or something more stability. So I decided to do that and just give it a try. On here, I'm gonna lift this up, I have put a woven fusible. And so this fabric is just a little thicker than I would say a normal cotton would be and I don't have to starch it now. So you want to do one of two things. If you use plain cotton, starch it so that it's a little stiffer and less likely to fray. And if you don't use anything on the back like something that's making the fabric stiffer, in this case a woven fusible, then you're okay and you don't have to actually starch it. Yeah. Makes sense. Thank you for thank you for going through that, Heather. Because we've talked about that before, but I know there's a lot of new people here today, and so uh, that's a really important thing, um, especially because it's great to cut fabric. And then the last quick thing is, did you have to add seam allowances to this, or did you add seam allowances to this? You're oh, using a pattern. Good question. So Leanne added the seam allowances, so I didn't have to. Her actual paper pattern already has the seam allowances in it. And this is how you would just cut it out directly when you, you got the pattern from her. So Perfect. great question, but I did not need to add seam allowances. If you were doing an applique pattern where they specifically said, please add seam allowances, then we would go back in and do that. Yeah, that was a great question. Absolutely. Yeah, great question. These are all great questions. Thank you for, for guiding us in, in the ways that we can um, show you what's going on here. It's helpful to know what you'd like to know. Okay, can you see my screen, Angela? And can you see my triangles is what I'm wondering, or my little shapes? We sure can. Great. If I choose the top one, it's selected if I choose the bottom one. So do you see what I mean when I can choose how to fussy cut without even making a template? Templates are awesome, I'm still gonna make them, but this is a perfect way we're using the scanner to not actually need to make a template. Okay, it's good to go. I have my fabric down. I'm going to push cut. So say, okay, please select cut. And I'm good to go. Let me make sure half cut is off. I have been cutting vinyl. So I wanted to be sure I want this to cut all the way through. And it's going to be less than a minute. Let's push start and I'll back it up so you can watch it cut. This is great. Back that up. All right, remember we have the thin fabric auto blade in there. I do have a piece of cotton with a woven fusible on the back, but a piece of fabric with just starch would have been perfectly fine. Your choice. I, Cindy, I'm, I'm reading your comment where you say, if you just use cotton, it ends up fraying. So oh, geez, um, there are certain things that you can use to prevent that. If you do have fabric like that, there's some chemicals you can put on there. You can message me if you're interested. Okay, I got stuck when I wasn't paying attention. So I'm gonna show you how it cuts, but this is basically what you should get every time. 
That looks now, great. What was that? Go ahead. That looks great. Yeah, it cuts perfectly. I mean, it does, it really does. So this is fast. This is a great way to get fussy cutting exactly how you want. But if uh, you want to make templates, like we showed you before, let me go, let me move this and go back. So, sorry, I'm gonna go in front of the camera really quick. So if you prefer and you'd rather cut this out directly just like this, you can also trace so you have more than one option. Okay, Very cool. Very any cool. other questions? All right, let's see what we have. Everybody's saying fantastic. And I thank you, brother, for posting that. I'll put the website below. So I'll get these links from Heather uh, when the show's over. And then just give me a couple hours because um, I'll, like about by about four o'clock Eastern, I'll have it up there for you. Um, so let me just see what other questions we have. Everybody loves this, by the way. Great tutorial. This is such a, just a really fun, um, easy way to get your patterns in. Let me show you really quick while we have a couple more minutes. Um, so exactly the same process. Let me move this out of the way. So in this process, we took this pattern and you can see how the scan and cut cut the hearts out. So this could easily be a template. And I did cut these out on cork and vinyl. In this pattern, you want this to be uh, something that doesn't fray. That's just how this particular pattern works. And so I've done this with cork. And this is like a little, um, I thought it was, I think it was a gift card holder is how it was. But really, you could put anything in it. And this, Oh, my gosh, that's so cute. Right? And this is just adhesive vinyl. This design is in the scanning cut. And uh, so easily you can... Um, choose a design from the scan and cut and add that to it just for an embellishment. Here's an example of what it looks like as it's getting ready to be sewn together. So one of the reasons I really wanted to show you this one is it's just so hard to get a perfect cut on um, something like a heart or a circle. And the scan and cut just cut it beautifully. And it goes together... These would be sewn just, together. Just and answered then, Kathy's question first. She said, can this cut vinyl? Oh, yes, it can. That's oh one of my gosh. favorite things to cut. Yes. This is, um, and this is marine vinyl, um, or the kind of vinyl you might see at the fabric store that's very thick and mm -hmm. uh, cuts this perfectly. This is just with the auto blade, so there's no issue with cutting vinyl or cork at all. Easy to do. Very easy. And you answered the court question too. Those are two of the most popular things right now that everybody loves to cut. Oh my gosh. Yes. I, I mean, I agree. And all you have to do. So the purpose for me of cutting the paper out was I just wanted to know about how much I needed of my fabric or my material. So by keeping my paper patterns, I can go into my scrap drawers and I can say, oh, okay, I'm gonna need a piece of cork this big for this piece and this big for this piece. Okay, perfect. And then I just take this off and this goes directly onto the machine. So um, let's see, do you want, should we cut this piece of cork? Sure, let's cut it. Let's do it. All right, let me get my standard mat. And I saw somebody in here asking about cowhide. I personally have not cut on cowhide, but I have cut, <laughs> let me rephrase that. I have cut real leather and it worked beautiful. So, I mean, I don't have an answer for you on that unless Heather knows. I have not tried that. I guess it would come down to also the uh, thickness. Because again, mm -hmm. we talked about how, it, you know, if you, I know everybody knows how thick a uh, puffy foam is. And yeah. if you, you know, and then also just the, I guess the weave of the material or, so I guess you could give it a shot if it's, and, and the machine will tell you if it's too thick. It'll say, too thick, you can't use this. It's a <laughs> yeah, wonderful and, option. Connie said, so no cutting knits. So Connie, that's an interesting comment, but, but uh, I don't know what season, maybe 15, season 15 or 14. Uh, we did a scan and cut project on It's So Easy TV and I had, it was a, like a Ponty knit. So it wasn't a drapey knit like I'm wearing or it wasn't a rayon knit and it wasn't like a tool knit, but it was a Ponty knit that has a little bit, just a little bit of uh, structure to it, a little bit, not a lot. And it cut beautifully because what we did is we used the scan and cut and cut a design within the back of the tank and used it as a cutout. I'll try to find that episode, Connie, and I think, um, 
it, I'm sure it's posted in the Fashion Sewing Club. If you pop in there, I can if you you can search that way too. But I'll try to find that for you. And if I can, I'll add it to this blog post that you guys can find the pattern on later today. So that's a great that. question. I'm glad you have that, Angela. Okay, I have taken my standard mat with the purple bottom, and this comes with your scan and cut, and I've taken a couple pieces that we know will fit so that I can put these on, and I've gone ahead and ex added some extra tape because this is a thicker material, and I don't want it to shift around. This is just washi tape. Uh, you can use you know, a variety of different kinds. I happen to have, of course, a brother one, but not an issue. Let me load this into the machine, and... Get that in there. All right, I'm taking out my thin fabric blade and I'm putting in my black standard blade that I pretty much use for cutting everything. Now, I've already scanned this in. We're gonna scan this exactly the same way as we did the Harlequin pouch. So I'm just gonna push the scan and cut and I'm gonna go ahead and go back up to it. Here it is. All right, let me just set it on the screen and I'll get closer so you guys are seeing my screen better. All right. While you're doing that, hey, Brianne, you you don't have to necessarily tape all of your fabrics down. It's just sometimes if your mat is not real sticky or um, if you're using a mat that's a little bit older, it's just a safety. Then that way when you start cutting it, you don't have to worry about it getting out of place at all. So you don't have to. Quite often I don't, but if you're cutting cork and things like that. It just takes a second and then you don't have to worry about it sliding or getting off the mat. That's all. Absolutely. This is just a safety feature for me. Um, my mats get used a lot. So they start to lose a little bit of their stick and this just, and you can see this is still very sticky or maybe you can hear it, but um, I just wanted to add a little extra stability. Okay. Once I have my cork on here, I'm going to push scan and push start. Give that a second. Now, I have not changed my scanning uh, height back to two. And let's see what the machine says here. I am going to increase the space between the scanning mat because I want a little bit of extra room. But let's go ahead and move this. I'm gonna move the heart down over the black and this one is going to need to be turned in order to fit. So we'll go here and we'll go rotate 90 degrees and now this one will fit perfectly fine and now this one uh does not need to be turned and i'm just gonna fit that in on the cork if i can see it i think this is the one thing that a lot of you are asking questions about you know is this is the scan and cut similar to other brands and this is what really makes it different is that you can scan in you can see your fabric look at she's not going to waste hardly anything and you nope. can move your pieces around if it's cut if it's cutting or if i mean there's so many different options when you have the scanning feature absolutely and if this is a little bit difficult for me to see if i push the magnifying glass I can actually go 200% or 400% and this will let me get really close and say, okay, am I at the edges? Am I going off? Because sometimes, you know, that's just a little bit of, uh, it's just a little bit difficult to see from far away. So let me go up. Looks like I'm fine on that one and I'll go down to the black one and it looks like I am on the edges everywhere. So yes, just like Angela's saying, I mean, use your scraps. I love the, the scanning feature that lets me use my small pieces. Okay, looks good to me. Let's go ahead and cut it out. The only thing to remember is, do you have to reverse the image of these? Uh, we talked about that with the Harlequin cap pouch where I um, needed to take my two pieces and one should be facing the one direction and the other goes the opposite direction. In this case, I could, but I don't need to, so we're good to go. If I wanted to, I would push object edit, and then I would click on the one that I'm reversing the image and push reverse image right here. And that would be done if you put your fabric right side down, but I'm not going to, so I'm gonna say okay. And we're going to go to cut, and I'm going to push start. Does Again, it tells me how long it'll take, and I have half cut off. So it's going to measure the depth of the mat first automatically with the auto blade. And then it's going to measure the depth of the cork. That's one of the fabulous features about this machine is that the blade automatically detects how thick. Oops. Okay. So 
um, I re remember how I said, I wonder if I should change the, uh, the scan depth. It's telling me it's not quite thick enough or there's not quite enough space. So I'm gonna go onto the side, flip the button and go start. So this machine recognized that I was using a thick fabric and it said, give us a little bit more room, change your scan depth and now it's ready to go. It's so quiet. It's so quiet. Oh my goodness. And that was a great way to show that that little lever on the side for those of you that were asking where it is. So just look on the side of your scan and cut. It's on the newer models. So if you don't, yes. if you're looking, you're like, what? <laughs> where to go? It's just then maybe you have an older model. Exactly. But everything else she's doing, you can do on your machine. What was that, Angela? Everything else you're doing, though, can be done on any of the scan and cuts. Absolutely. Now notice it's doing it a second time. The scan and cut will cut in one millimeter increments. So if it all detects that this is thicker than one millimeter, it will come back and do it a second time to make sure that it cut all the edges. Oh, sorry, I meant to go back so that you could see. So this is its second time through. It already did it once and now it's doing it a second time just to be sure that it cut through everything perfectly. And now I don't believe it does it a third time. Nope, all done, finish. I'm going to release it from here. And then let's just pull these out so you can see. So make sure I'm in the camera shot. So here is this one. And pull this one off here is the heart. So cut nice. beautifully, perfectly, no issues. The tape was just my uh, safety to make sure that since I have a less sticky mat that it didn't move around. And now these go, get back in the camera. These go back together. Oh, I have that wrong. Like this, and this will fold up to make this pouch. So that just is so cute. Perfect use for the scanning cut. And like I said, you saw that I did it with vinyl too. So let me go back to. So you can definitely do this. This is intended for things that are non uh, wo woven, that won't ravel when you're done with it. Those are so great. Everybody was saying these would make such great gifts. If you have little cards, um, if you're giving money, graduations coming up. What a great way to give those things. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, you know what I was just thinking? My nephews, one of my nephews just lost another tooth. I was thinking that'd be a good tooth fairy pillow. <laughs> oh, that's a perfect idea. Yes. And you could absolutely add their name or um, you can use some adhesive vinyl and, and personalize it or write, you know, from the tooth fairy or something. That's a great idea. <laughs> Definitely. Um, does it mark or score the mat at all? So Nancy, the new scan and cuts have an auto blade and, and I, they are just spot on. The older yes. ones you have to do a test cut for sure. Correct. Now you will still see some marks in your mat. So if you see that nothing's wrong, it's just that is a, an automatic, as the blade works, it still does make marks in the mat, but does not not, should not have any issues with going through it. Or, you know, sometimes when we had to adjust the blades before, the blade would actually go all the way through the mat and there might be issues. You won't have that issue with the auto blade. Yeah, definitely. And you all are so welcome. So what I'll do um, is... I'm gonna, the website's below. I'm sending her an email right when we're finished here. I'll get the links and maybe the name of the stabilizer sheet or you know the type of stabilizer so I can put those the information in there for you. Anything else she wants to throw in there. I'll put that on my blog. So go to AngelaWolf.com. You'll see it, the top video. This I believe is called um, episode 159. So that's on AngelaWolf.com. I just pop in the YouTube videos from brothers. So you'll see when you see 159, you'll know it's this one. I'll leave the comment section open. So if you have more comments or questions, feel free to leave them there. Uh, and if it's something I can't answer, I will reach out to Heather because this was <laughs> awesome. Absolutely awesome. I'm making sure there aren't any last minute ones. Absolutely. Um, can it cut through batting? Oh, okay. That's a really good question. Let me show you. It's, I have something sitting right here about that. Okay. So the Harlequin pouch, just because it's what we were talking about, uh, asks about, uh, tells you to use fusible batting. I'm trying to think if that was the name I want. So, you know, just a, a, a fairly thin batting with a uh, adhesive on the back. It, I love that stuff. It's great for crafting it's, projects. Isn't it? It's fantastic. Yes. I do not recommend using your scan and cut. This is very fuzzy and difficult fibers to on, get through, unlike a, a woven. So here's what I recommend take the pattern piece and create your own template. One of two things you can, okay, Angela, really quick, cause it's hard to hold stuff up. Let me just go to the flat one. 
Uh, I know it just takes a second, but this will be easier to show you. Okay, so if you have the pattern piece, then you are going. I'll wait till, hold on one sec, Heather. We're just waiting for your camera to come back in. No problem. Okay. There you are. There's the, the fusible. So I took the pattern piece and I have two ways to now use this. I could either trace it directly from, and you can actually see, I started the tracing line here. So I could use, now if I wanted to um, back again to fussy cutting, I could definitely be using it there. But for I can also just take this and now place it directly on. And I could trace this with a pen or I could even use my rotary cutter. So with fusible fleece or really just any any type of batting. I don't recommend cutting with a scanning cut. You could certainly try. There's some different things that people have out there to do so, but I just find you don't get as good of results as I would like. So this is my go-to. I'm going to cut my use, you know, something that I can use over and over again and use it one of these two ways. That makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Let me go back. All right. We, you guys we, are we, welcome. Cindy says, please have Heather back. I learned so much today. Oh, Heather's coming back. No worries at all. <laughs> I will be back. I will. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I, and it does cut felt. And you are so welcome. This was a great show, Heather. So much information in there. So uh, I know a lot of you popped in a little bit late, which is no problem at all. If you're on YouTube, you can go back and watch the YouTube show anytime. Be sure to subscribe to the Brother YouTube page and you'll be notified every time we go live. If you're watching this on Facebook, if you share it to your page, you can go back and watch it anytime. And be sure to follow Brother Sews and Brother Crafting and you'll never miss a video there either. Very fun. So Heather, this was great. I'm very excited to try this. And um, again, I will get her information. Maybe give me a few hours because I have some meetings, but about four o'clock Eastern, it should be up by and you'll look for episode 159. I'll put links to the patterns. One of them, she said, is free. The other one's like two bucks. That's like yeah. less than a cup of coffee. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So worth it. They're so fun. Very. So thank you very, very much. And I hope you have a great day. Did I lose thank you, Heather? Thank you so much, Angela. I have enjoyed talking with everyone. Thank you for your questions, for letting us know what you want to see and what we can show you. So I've enjoyed working with all of you today. This has been so much fun. So for those of you that want to know the schedule for, uh, let's see, the weekend, uh, we have another episode of It's So Easy at noon on Saturday. And then next week, we will see you back around. I don't remember if it's noon or 2 o'clock on Tuesday, so you have to check the events page on Brother Sews. But I also have all of these listed on AngelaWolf.com. So when you're over there watching later all the information she has, just click on Classes and Events, and you'll see the entire schedule. I try to keep you up to date of who's coming on, what's happening, and uh, this is going to be very fun. Heather, can't wait to have you back. This was fantastic. And Brother Sewing and Crafting family, thank you for watching us today. Thank you so much. It was great to be here. I had this.